did everything. All right, guys, we are back in Solo Learn doing HTML basics. We're in HTML doing HTML basics. So let's jump in real quick. Ooh, this section's a lot longer than the last one we just did. So that's good. So we have the paragraph tag. Um, the paragraph tag is used uh, with a P. It has an opening tag and a closing tag. So uh, as we just said, you have an opening tag and a closing tag. And let's go ahead and demonstrate that. That's where you put text in. It'll be treated as if it's a paragraph. So it won't, you'll see that if we have three paragraphs, they'll be on separate lines because that's how it, a paragraph would normally be broken up. The BR slash will add a single line. It basically starts a new line if you need that uh, without the text block. So there's our BR slash. Um, so you'll see paragraph, paragraph, this is a line break, so it drops down. Now with paragraph, it adds a little bit of extra space in is what it was saying there. So fill in the blanks. We want to have a closing paragraph tag, and then this is our br slash. And there we go. Um, text formatting. So you can format elements using b for bold, uh, big. I didn't know about big. I knew about small, so I guess I should have known about big. Uh, so you have all these little um, text that will show you how this works, right? Which is pretty cool. Uh, so you have insert. Let's see if it actually will open this up with all the examples. It's been a while since I've tried this. So we can see, let's go ahead and run this and we can see the output. So big text, you see bold, big text, italic text, small text, strong text, uh, subscripted text, super uh, scripted text, excuse me, subscripted text, inserted text, and then deleted text. So if you want to put this one's probably one that you'll use quite often, especially when you do like to do list and you're learning something new, things like that. Let's go ahead and jump back in. So which two tags make the text bold? You have B and strong. You can format elements as we just showed. Okay, so it, you, you can format a lot of different things. Let's go ahead and fill in the correct tags. So if we are trying to make this bold or strong, like so, and then, um, Important text, subscripted. I believe that was sub and sub. Cool. We're a flawless champion. That's pretty cool. Headings, lines, and comments. So comments are pretty crucial uh, to your code. So headings are basically various size text. You, it goes from H1 being the largest to H6 being the smallest. You can see right here the output. Pretty straightforward. Um, it's a heading. It's supposed to, you know, be big, be bolder, showcase what's going on. Uh, so H1 to H6 are the headings. Horizontal lines. These are basically lines that go across your screen, as you can see right here. So you have a horizontal line, and this will be used to uh, to showcase a couple different things. That wasn't supposed to play. All right, um, and let's go ahead and continue on. Right. How do you indic indicate a horizontal line? That's an HR um, for horizontal line. Now your comments in HTML are the caret, exclamation point, dash, dash, and then dash, dash, caret to end it with your comment going in between there. You may use comments to explain stuff in your code or anything like that, or in anywhere they're necessary. Use them as needed. It's better to have too many comments than not enough, in my opinion. So we'll do a dash dash, dash dash carrot. Elements. So HTML elements, such as our p tags, br slashes, all these are elements. Um, so uh, some don't have end tags. So if it starts with a slash, if the first tag starts with a slash, like the br tag, there is no closing tag. Um, and HTML elements consists of tags, opening tag. Well, it cannot have a closing tag, so it could be tags. I believe it's only tags. These, hmm. In H, let's go back, right? So, start tag and end tag and with the content in between. Okay, so like apparently, even though some things don't have tags, they're still considering the content and to have an opening and closing tag. Uh, okay. Um, I was thinking that maybe logically that wouldn't be correct since there are elements that don't have that, but maybe they're written in the same way that it just ignores it or says that it's 
undefined or something. I'm not quite sure. But anyhow, uh, that's neither here nor there. Just understand how to use tags. Um, elements are quite small since you can't put contents within a break tag and you don't have an opening and closing tag separate single element. Okay. So in our example here, remember the title tag will let us set the, the name of the page. Oh, excuse me, this is our head tag. Sorry guys. And then we have our title tag and we'll pass in our title content. Then we have our closing title tag. Very nice. We're now down to attributes, which oftentimes I will call parameters. So if I say that, I apologize, but they're actually attributes. Um, so in this case, you'll see we have a line equal to center, which you can go ahead and pass on things. Typically, you'll want to do this with just CSS in a class or something. But what they do is they modify the tag. Attributes are specific to a tag, and they modify it as so. So in this case, the horizontal uh, rule, remember the, the line, uh, we can go ahead and set that to be 50 pixels long. So with the um, with attribute, you can use pixel or percent to uh, define how far the width attribute is. So you also have the align attribute, which you can pass in something like this to center it. So what attribute is to align the contents of an element to the right, center, or left? That would be align. And then finally, attributes uh, contra contradictory at times. So what happens? Well, you center a paragraph, but because this is inline styling, uh, it's always going to override the um, parent, which in this case would be the paragraph. And so uh, we want to go ahead and align the paragraph like so. I just got my glasses dirty. And continue on. So we have images. Um, you see right here. Images have a source tag, this is basically location, the image display, and then it also has a closing tag, similar to uh, the BR slash, right? So that would be IMG. So there's only one tag with images. Um, the alt, so in case the image cannot be displayed, the alt attribute specifies an alter text that describes the image in words. So if this doesn't display, let's go, well, it doesn't actually gonna showcase it here. I guess we could. So we'll just add like four, five, six, and then we'll say, yep. Whoops. Let's see. Run that. So you'll see right here, this is what displays with the alt tag when this image is not found. So people can see what it's supposed to be, maybe. Or maybe you just want to keep it as an error message. Um, but yeah, that's what the alt tag does. What attribute should be used to add an image URL? So that would be the source. This is the, where the file is located, the source of the file. You can also resize an image with those attributes. So you have a height, you have a width, that sort of stuff. You can use pixels or you can use um, um, percentages. This is a very good point. So if you know you're not going to need a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel, you should probably lower it to the 100 and, you know, save as 150 by 150 or somewhere a little bit closer uh, to increase the speed of your site. So what two app attributes can you use to resize images inside HTML code? You have width and you have height. Image border can also put border on images. Um, so uh, image and that our source is SRC. That's where things are located. Um, the A tag, the href tag, is basically allows you to create links. It doesn't basically allow you to do that. I don't know why I said that. That's exactly what it does. Uh, so allow you to create links. Uh, the anchor tag uh, also always has a closing and opening tag, unlike images, as most tags do. So it needs to know for for where um, it needs to go. Um, so you'll see right here, the A href. This is basically where you want them to relocate to when they click this. So href is the location of where we're trying to go. The target attribute. So the target attribute is a little bit of what happens when you do this. Now. Uh, by default, if you don't set target, it will just take the page you're currently on and go to it. Now, if you want that 
that link when you click it when you click learn plane here to open a, a new window you need to reset that value to target underscore blank i believe in html5 you can just put blank and it should work the same as well so uh let's go ahead and continue on like so pretty cool so uh lists lists are also really important you'll use these quite a bit there's ordered lists which means that these list objects when we open this up will come out with numbers just gonna run this real quick so you'll see one two and three so this is an ordered list and then there is uh, unordered list which I'm sure they'll come up with in a second so enter the tag corresponding list item so the you define what type of list with the ol tag if it's ordered list and then that how many list items using the li tag and then you have unordered list which are basically the same thing except there's not numbers included in them so you see dots instead now you can style these various different ways but uh, that's basically the difference between unordered list and ordered list and you'll see right here you have a a UL so this is an unordered list that starts right here and has list items within each one here each list item has an opening and closing tag as well and then there's tables a lot of stuff goes on with tables uh, tables are really only if you're displaying very static data right so like if you're going to display uh, statistics you're going to display something where it's like there's row a row and then columns of data in there. That's really the only time you're going to use a table. So you're going to start off with a table tag, and then you're going to find define your table row, your TR, and then you're going to define table data within there, which are three columns, right? So in this table, it's one, it's a single table with one row and three columns, as we see right here. So to use to create columns in a row, that would be our TD, table data. And then uh, you can also define a border on here. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now, sometimes you may want your table to take up more than two slots. Like typically, it will take up only one column and one row in the table. But you'll see right here, this one right here takes up two slots. We have three columns, you see, red, green, and blue. Our table row, which is basically right here. And then we have table to column, table to column, table to column. And then we're having an empty data, and then we have emp another empty data here, except it's taking up two rows. We're doing that with the call span equal to two. What attribute is used to, for a cell to expand two or more? And you can set this to however many as you want. Uh, in our case, it was two. Uh, call span demonstrates call span attribute and action we already showcased that so you see right here now they're just passing in data and it's going in like so before it's just empty so we want to have our table row you have to have a table row to have table columns uh, or table data which are your columns and then you of course need to define that you're working within a table um, you can also set background color align attributes as well in here so you see right here this is a setting the color for just the table data instead of one thing here so that background is red uh, used to change the color of a cell though it's BG color and then inline and block elements now this is something that I am uh, guilty of not being the best with is keeping track of inline and block elements so we might slow down for a second here so we're setting the background color to green and the font color to white and adding some padding. Padding is basically just how much space the element has around it. So you'll see right here it has a padding top, padding in between, padding on the left, padding on the bottom, and then this is just based off the space. So you'll see right here we're setting the color. This is CSS at this point. Where we're setting the color of a single word important in red. So the div element defines a block level section in a document. The span element de defines an inline section of the document. So what this means is the div is considered to take up an entire space. Like there's actually space allocated to the div, while the inline section is just more focused on the element. Interact with the element and doesn't take up space. It just does stuff based off of what you say. Um, that's probably a very poor description of it, but that's what makes sense to me. Uh, so block level elements are divs. 
There we go. Excuse me, div and h1. There we go. Because h1s have space around it as well. Well, meanwhile, the reason that bold and um, was it bold and M don't because they don't take up anything. They just alter things. Um, so inline elements cannot contain any block level elements. Didn't know that. Um, so these are some very specific things here. Uh, can you insert a block element inside an inline element? Let me go back real quick. What is, oops, back too far. So you can insert inline elements inside block elements. You cannot. What's up, Amy? No, I'm just recording. Do you need some? No. All right, baby. All right, you can insert inline elements inside block elements. For example, you can have multiple span elements inside a div element. Inline elements cannot contain any block elements. Okay. Can you insert a block element inside an inline element? No. And then forms. So you'll do a lot of forms. Uh, data analytics and gathering data is very big. Uh, so be 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 uh, comfortable with forms. Um, not too hard. It's just about capturing data and then sending it to the database. That's the hard part and formatting it the way that you want it. So HTML forms are used to collect information from the user. So you have a form tag. The action attribute will point to a web page that will load after the user submits a form. So usually when a form is submitted, you want it to go somewhere else. You can do that there. So that would be the action attribute. Cool. Um, now, uh, this gets a little, this is a little interesting. So um, the method here, people uh, who are just learning HTML may not understand what like a RESTful API is and get in post. So this may be a little, a little complicated. Um, but when you use git, the form data will be visible from the pa in the page address. Use post, the form is updating data, includes sensitive information. Basically, and the only thing to really keep out of this is that post is more secure than Git. That's really what you need to know. Um, now, you can also name a form, uh, it, you know, which you may ref refer to later on. So that's what the name attribute here. Uh, the input element has has many variations depending on the type attribute. It can be a text, it can be a password, radio, but it's basically a uh, just a text box that you would enter stuff into. Um, now, oftentimes you'll style this. So these are both inputs. One is for username, one is for password in this example. So based off what you set it, in this case password, it's going to asterisk like asterisk it like that. So input type for password type would be equal to password. And it would inherit some properties based off what you set that attribute to. Now value is a interesting thing that you'll use quite a bit uh, when dealing with inputs. So sometimes, in, especially in Angular, if you make if you uh, do that, you'll use value quite a bit. Ng value actually. So sometimes you may just want a boolean value, which is a true or false variable, such as in the. This may be outdated with the social justice warriors out there, but uh, uh, may say your gender is male or female. Uh, so they. You know, 10 years ago, that was a Boolean. It was either, you're either male or you're either female. And so um, uh, this is a one or two value, true or false, basically. And you may store it in the database like that while you still may want to display male or female to the user. That's basically what's going on there. So we have our form, our methods post, our action is just to redirect exactly to where we're at so don't do anything. And then we're gonna say, look, the input type is submit. And, and let's go ahead and close the form as well. Cool. Uh, so the submit button submits a form to the action attribute. So basically that URL uh, will then send the data there. That's more or less what you need to know. After the form is submitted, the data should be processed on a server using a programming language such as PHP, which is something that you will do quite often. You could maybe do Node as well. Um, I've done this with PHP. 
in the past for work and whatnot. So which value for the type attribute turns the input tag into a submit button? So submit. HTML colors, lots of different colors in HTML. Uh, you can have hexadecimal values, uh, 16 values, 0 through F, as continue on, uh, 0 through F, as we just said. So you have your RGB scale that overlaps right here. Um, you can do it as, let's just con get to the questions. What color model does HTML use? Uses RGB. Uh, color values, you can also uh, set color values using the hashtags, or uh, you can state the color. So uh, what is the color black? I believe it was zero, zero, zero. Um, by hex characters, as they say, so hashtag that. So in our example here, uh, you can set it, which I guess is a dark blue, and then hashtag F all the way across is white. So body, we're gonna set color and, oh, excuse me, BG color. And then we're gonna go ahead and set this to hashtag uh, white. And finally, we have frames. So I don't know the last time I used a frame. The frame tag specifies one specific window within a frame set. Each frame in a frame set can have different attributes such as border, scrolling, the ability to resize. Frame set element specifies the number of columns or rows in a frame set as well as what percentage or number of pixels of space each of them occupies. The frame set is not supporting HTML5. So this is this is outdated guys so you probably shouldn't be using this moving forward. Um, but we'll continue doing it. Uh, rows and columns will indicate the size and then use nor size attributes of whether a user can resize the element or not. Um, it's also a source Again, the frame tag is not supported in HTML5. What attribute prevents, uh, was it north size, I believe it was? Let me go back. It was N-O-R-E size. Or no, oh, I get it. no resize. Ah, uh, that makes sense. No resize, <laughs> I was in north E size. And let's just go on to our question here. When formatting text, can you get the same result when using different tags? Yeah. When formatting text, can you get the same result when Formatting. When formatting text, can you get the same result? I believe so, yes. It's a weird question. What does the href attribute contain? Uh, the URL to be transferred to. Good. Uh, which tag contains cell tags besides the table tag? TD. Which tag contains cell tags, TR, cell, yeah, it's TR, there we go. Table row, what does HTML stand for? Hypertext Markup Language. And choose the current HTML tag for the largest heading. So H1 is the largest, all the way down to H6, the smallest. Which of the, these tags are table tags, table row, table, table row, Table, table, row, table, data. Um, continue on. And then we have uh, fill in the blank. So we want our form, the methods post, the uh, image uh, tag here. Notice how it closes. We have a line break. And then we input, and then the type is equal to text, with the name is equal to name. Cool. And finally, align the text of the paragraph to the right. So um, we can do this by using the div and we're going to line it right. Cool. So that was our first section or second section, HTML basics. Moving forward, we'll do challenges, which should be fun, hopefully. Uh, but that was pretty, that was a, there's a lot going on in there. Um, I hope you guys found it helpful. As always, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share, and support me on patreon.com slash codenotorials360. And look forward to our weekly, uh, weekly behind the code interviews with a software professional every Friday. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.
Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. If you're interested in a coding boot camp, why don't you check them out where they include housing alongside their tuition so you can get up, go, and immerse yourself in the environment. If you want to support me, go over to patreon.com slash codingtutorials360 so we can put out more content. Thanks for watching.